Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of 20 Somethings Podcast. I am Sarah Birch, and I am the host of this podcast where we go over all the ups and downs and ins and outs of life in your 20s, in the 2020s. Oh, sorry, my nose is dripping. I must be getting a little bit sick, but it's for anybody in their 20s, anyone entering into their 20s, anyone exiting their 20s, anyone just living in the 2020s, which is all of us. It's for everybody. Um, But primarily we do talk about career, love, relationships, money, things that are particularly heavy and crazy and chaotic when you're in your 20s before you kind of have life settled and figured out. Uh, I am filming today on my crappy video camera. Sorry if the quality isn't 10 out of 10. I'm saving up for a proper video camera for the new year or in the new year. We're already in the new year, which is crazy. And I wanted to wish everybody a happy new year. Um, The episode with Nick did come out technically in the new year. And if you haven't listened to that one yet, I definitely recommend you do. It was a really fun episode, but we actually recorded it before the new year. So we didn't wish anybody a a happy new year. So I am going to do that right now. Happy new year. Happy 2023. I wonder how you're doing. I hope you're doing well. I hope all your, um, what's it called? Resolutions. I was going to say revelations, that too. I hope all your resolutions are in effect and that you're feeling happy and well. I am feeling really great so far in 2023. Well, my first few days were a little bit rough, um, but I was PMSing. So then I like got my period and I felt fine. I overall feel really positive about this year and I'm excited to see what happens and what magical mysteries and adventures come my way. So now that I've gotten that boring intro out of the way, you probably were like, skip, 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 skip. Um, I haven't gotten any new ratings in like a bajillion years, which is really frustrating. So I might do like a little giveaway or like a little contest or something just to incentivize people to leave a rating and review or to subscribe on YouTube because it is hard in this day and age to like get any traction. Anyway, that is going down a whole rabbit hole that like we don't need to get into today because we're talking about thumbnail. We're talking about another story time, another breakup, another heartbreak, another intercontinental uh, long distance. Well, actually, it wasn't long distance for once. It wasn't because we actually were both living. Well, it actually, you know what? It kind of was because we were still living 45 minutes apart even though we were in the same country. Um, So it was like kind of long distance, but not really. Yeah, so we're going to talk about another story time. And I wasn't going to do this on here. I was just going to make a YouTube video. But you guys loved the last one, um, which is hilarious. I was so defensive when I made that. I don't regret making it. I'm very proud of that episode, actually. And I think it's iconic. And I think it's I really do stand by a lot of the things I said in that. Anyway, uh, you guys loved the last Storytime episode and a few people reached out saying, girl, like, continue to spill the tea, continue to make these story times, um, talking about heartbreak, breakups, bad dates, good dates, um, because people like the gossip, the tea, the drama. There's nothing wrong with that. I like it too. I do. I am still going to make my like serious topical podcast where I talk about things that are important to talk about. But to be honest, those do not perform as well as my ones that are about like friendship breakups and like ex-boyfriends. Like those ones do (laughs) a lot better, which is which makes sense. Right. Um, But all my stories are really intense and really dramatic and I'm not making them up. I swear. What do you have to do? I swear to God, I swear on the you do put your right hand up left hand up I don't know I've never been in court but you swear on the bible that everything you say is the whole truth and nothing but the truth so help me god I swear I mean it is obviously from my perspective I don't have my ex-boyfriends on the podcast to come on and explain their perspective and they could if they wanted to but I would I would probably um not give them a lot of microphone time to be honest one of my ex-boyfriends actually did come on the podcast uh And that was actually fun. I do like that episode. So anyway, this all kind of comes full circle because the story time that I did last time was about that person. Um, And that was a hard episode to record. I didn't even mean to record it. I sat down to make a different podcast and then I just like started talking about it. And then I just like 
poured out of me like lava and I could not stop talking and it was so therapeutic and it was very raw and vulnerable and real and I think that's why a lot of people really resonated with that episode but it also I think triggered like a lot of hate from men um who maybe felt defensive or felt like I was attacking them which like just take the lessons that I'm providing you for free and roll with it like so your life is better with females in the future but anyway or you can just scream at me and call me misogynistic names and stuff whatever whatever works for you bro anyway um but yeah and I was very defensive because it was so fresh and you could literally hear like the sadness and the voice cracks in my voice and just the sheer anger and I don't regret making that episode I I think it was entertaining and therapeutic for me in certain ways um but I would if I could go back I probably would have waited a while and then recorded it like so I could just be a little bit more objective and a little bit more distant from the situation because it did stir up like a lot of feelings within me and then having to edit it and re-edit it and stuff like it really um re-traumatized me (laughs) in some ways again I don't regret it um but this story that I'm going to tell you took place when I very when I moved to Belfast in 2018. So September-ish 2018. So it's very distant. I mean, for me anyway. And uh, I just feel a lot more cool, calm, and collected telling this story time. And the point of art is to turn pain and turn confusion and distress. My puppy's home. Darla. Hi, honey bunny into art um and that's what I was doing with that podcast I was taking a lot of hurt feelings and confusion and frustration hi Baba hi angel girl mommy's recording the podcast you want to say hi say hi good girl she just got back from a walk with my dad Um, anyway, this is like me going on and on and on. I think I just am trying to justify why I made that episode because there are days that I'm like, why did I do that? Um, but no, you got to stand by your art. You got to stand by the decisions you make in the moment. If they made you feel better or if they offered some resolve or some clarity, like this person never gave me closure, um, or gave me an apology or gave me answers. And so I kind of like was... I guess working through the equation of what happened to try to figure that out for myself because I believe in making peace whenever you can for yourself and for others and I believe in I do believe closure is a real thing and I believe it I've experienced it before many times not getting closure and it does prolong the suffering of like both parties a lot anyway so this story took took place before that story So the last story time, I believe I met them initially in 2019. So I'd already been living in the UK for like quite a while. I moved September 2018 to Belfast. And that's kind of when I started teaching and found my own place and stuff. And I met this person literally like day two of living there, which is not what I wanted and not what I would recommend to someone if they are looking for a fresh start and moving somewhere new and trying to have an adventure. Like I did not choose this it chose me and (laughs) it imploded because I was not ready and I was not willing to be in a relationship but I was also like terrified to be alone but I'll explain all of that in further detail um so I was there with my friend Elise she actually came over for the first two weeks to help me like adjust and we traveled we went to London for a few days and then like Dublin and Galway and then back to Belfast for like four days or something And it was super fun, although she got really sick, which was unfortunate. So we, um, there was a few nights that I went out without her because she was just too sick. But like I had a few other friends in Belfast. So I went out one night with my old friends from uni, like Dervla. I don't know if Orla was there, but a few of my friends, um, hi girlies, if you're, if you're watching or listening and we got fucked up and we went to the national i think which is a really fun bar slash club downtown in belfast i don't fully remember the night but i do remember being in the smoking area and my friend patrick was there hi patrick if you're listening and i'm sure he doesn't even remember this but patrick was like 
oh fuck like I can't believe like what that's crazy about let's call him I'm gonna do another story time on him but I don't want to say people's real names let's call Madagascar guy Richard and let's call this other guy that I'm gonna tell this story about let's call him Peter sure so Patrick was talking about Richard who's my first ex-boyfriend from the first time I lived in Belfast and uh, that's a whole other story but he was like oh I can't believe like he moved that's crazy like that sucks for you or something I don't think he meant anything by it but I was like so distraught that he was no longer in Belfast and I really was not over him at this point in time but anyway so Patrick was like rubbing it in because he was drunk and I was drunk and I think he was just like trying to banter but I was just I just broke down crying and walked out by myself so drunk like walked out of the bar it was probably like 2 a.m and so everybody was lining up for taxis because this was kind of the time of night where everyone's trying to get home and I could not get a taxi to save my life and I'm trying to like hail one and I'm so drunk and I'm crying and then some blonde guy Peter literally like jumped out of nowhere and was like hey are you okay like do you need a taxi and I was like I can't get one I just need to get home I was so upset like Anyway, and then he was like, oh, don't worry, I got you, I got you. And he was like, literally like jumped in front of a taxi to get it for me, like forced the taxi man to pull over. And he was like, I'm sorry, I just like, I have to get your number before you go. And I'm like, I don't know, I don't know, like, I'm not in a good place or whatever. And he's like, please, like, as a thank you for the taxi, like anything, like I need to get your number. So I was like, okay, I guess since you were so sweet and you helped me get a taxi, like, I will give you my number and I don't know I had just gotten this number it was a UK number I have no idea how I either remembered it or I must have found it in my phone or had it written down somewhere because I was so drunk but I gave him the right number and I left and got in the taxi a few days later I was in Enniskillen I was hiking um which is in which is like west of Northern Ireland and uh I got a text from a random number that said like hi it's Peter the blonde prince um and it was so nice to meet you the other night like hope you got home safe or something and I remember talking to Elise and being like oh my god like I actually gave him the right number that's crazy like he was pretty cute and he was very cute he looked a lot like Niall Horan just so you guys can visualize it like same sort of body type blonde greenish blue eyes um and like Irish so yeah he was a cutie and uh I was like hi and then he was like can I see you again type thing like he was very eager he was very on it like and I was like uh but I wasn't really into it I'm gonna be honest um there's no way Peter is listening uh Peter and I are have traumatized each other enough but I was like um he was very cute though but it wasn't like I was like head over heels like I was kind of like meh He was cute, but I just wasn't really into it. But he was saying, please, like, next time you're going out. I was like, fine. Oh, my God. No, I'm just kidding. He was very sweet. So we met up with him at my favorite bar called The Points uh, in Belfast when we were there. I think it was, like, one of our last nights. And um, we hit it off. But there was a bunch of other people there, too. Like, I was meeting up with all of my old friends. And I think we invited our friend Josh, who we met at when we were oh yeah we were really hung over and we were at um a restaurant downtown I can't remember what it was called and the guy he was like one of the workers there he gave us like a bunch of tea for free because Elise was so sick and I was so hung over and he was like you girls seem like you're having like a rough go like here just help yourself have as much tea as you want and we loved him and I'm actually still friends with him so we invited him out so there was like a bunch of people out that night it was like a group date and I don't think Peter was expecting this because he looked like a little disappointed when he walked in um and he was older than me. He was, I was 22 and he was 28 and all of these people were like 22 or 21, but he made the most of it. And he had the whole table laughing and cackling. He was probably like the most personable person I've ever dated. Like life of the party, really, really like funny, friendly guy could get along with anyone, like could start a conversation with a cactus. Um, and so I was kind of, surprised like pleasantly surprised at him and how much fun he was and then I was just taken aback like I wasn't expect. and so anyway we walked to but he was like very eager 
Um, like I could tell he was really into me and he was like holding my hand when we were walking. This was like our first ever hangout. And I was just like a little um, unsure of of what his intentions were or whatever and so we go to limelight which is a club in belfast like a really fun club but it's for a younger crowd i used to go there all the time when i was in university there but i was still young at the time i was 22 but he definitely hadn't been to that club in a long time but he came because he was a good sport and we danced and this boy was picking me up tossing me over his shoulder twirling me around like it was so he was like he was buying everybody drinks he was so much fun i just remember and his dancing he was dancing so hard like sweating through his shirt like didn't even care like pit stains and that is kind of like the type of person i always imagine myself with was someone who could just hold their own and someone who was just really outgoing and fun and like fearless and i was quite taken i think the issue with him is the timing and like maturity like I was young I was 22 I was still heartbroken and hung up on my other ex who I had fallen in love with in the exact same city and so it was like everything that happened with Peter I kind of compared to everything I felt and everything that happened with Richard and it just never seemed to compare like it always seemed to fall short which is just my issue like it's nothing that Peter did wrong Peter did everything right He was consistent. He was a great listener. He was patient. He bought me random gifts out of nowhere just because he was thinking of me. He paid attention to what I was talking about. He'd hold me when I cry. Like he was, I I ended up in the hospital a few times when I was dating him just because of stupid stuff. And he always showed up at the hospital, like my favorite coffee, favorite snacks, like just held me the whole time. He was like the best boyfriend. And I really hope that um, I've matured enough at this point that if I do find another man who treats me that well, that I'll actually be able to like appreciate it this time. And that's like, I don't beat myself up about that. I was young. I was dumb. I was in love with someone else. Like I did the best I could at the time. And I recognize that I was being treated well and I wanted to want that. But at the same time, I, you can't help who you love. And I, and I was hung up on someone else who, I was hoping, like, I was hoping these nights I was spending curled up in bed with Peter, I was hoping that would be Richard when I moved there, to be quite honest. Um, So everything just felt like a letdown. And I'm sure Peter could feel that, you know, like, people are aware of other people's weird vibes and distant, distant energy. And I'm sure he could, could understand I was very honest. One thing you can't you can't say about me is that I'm not wait, but one thing you can always say about me in a relationship even though I am not perfect at all, I have my bad habits and everything like everybody does, but I am always honest. Almost to a fault sometimes, like if I'm upset with you, I'm going to talk to you about it. If I'm feeling um like the entire time I was with him, I was saying like I was talking about Richard a little bit and saying what happened with that situation and saying how I'm not positive, I'm over him. And I was like, I just want to take this slow because I'm feeling a little cornered here. Because he, like, from after that first date, he was like, let me take you out, let me take you out, let me take you out. Which, again, like, 10 out of 10, all men should be like this. But I had just gotten there and I was ready to, like, shake my ass on the bar and get every guy in Belfast lined up, like, on a, like, on a rotating schedule to like hang out with them meet them get to know people like flirt dance have fun like I was not trying to find a relationship unless to be honest unless it was with Richard and if it wasn't with that Richard guy I was like okay well let's just fuck around because I'm in Ireland I'm 22 I'm free as a bird like and so that's like would be what I would recommend to other young girls or boys if they're traveling Um, Unless it's something really, really, really special that you think is like a forever thing, I would just stay single and like maintain your boundaries and maintain your expectations of what you wanted that experience to be before you even left. Like it's so easy when you get lonely and homesick and sad, it's so easy to like fall into the comfort of someone, you know, and then to just kind of end up in a relationship and you're not really sure how you got there. And then of course you have to remember that you're always going to be the exotic girl, which I miss so much. I miss being the exotic princess like 
everywhere you go, you know, you're ordering a coffee and people look at you like, where are you from? And then you get to like, it's like an immediate icebreaker. People are, want to hear about Canada and people want to know what, how you ended up in, the, in this place. It's so fun. It's so fun. I mean, unless you don't like being the center of attention, then it's probably not that fun. But for someone like me, I loved being the exotic girl and I ate it up. But he kind of staked, is that a word? Staked his claim on me a little bit um, and quite quickly, like before we, before I knew it, we were like consistently like having sleepovers and going on dates and like texting every day. And, and then, and we never, I don't even know if we ever had an official like boyfriend conversation, but it just was kind of like all of the behavior and everything just added up to the fact that he was my boyfriend. And I was like, oh, I guess I have a boyfriend now. Like I've only been here for a month or two. And, um, I was feeling discontented. I'm not going to lie. And I was doing things that were a little bit out of character. Like I was, if I'd be out with him and some friends, if I had a bit of time alone, like if he was in the washroom or something, I would find myself like looking for Richard or like looking for other guys and like seeing what else was out there. Like I was, I definitely had a wandering eye. Um, and I wasn't taking our relationship as seriously as he was. And that's on me. Like, I'm not saying that that's right. It's just the truth of the matter. And I was aware that I was doing these things and he was seeing it and then he'd get pissed at me and I was trying to explain like I think this is moving too fast like I I don't mean to hurt you but I also don't want to hurt myself and I don't want to be unfair to myself and and he just he really cared about me so much I think he was just so frustrated by the scenario and I don't blame him like I've been in the reverse situation as Peter and that's why I've always maintained so much sympathy for Peter even though things didn't end well. Like I always, I know what it's like to love someone more than they love you. Trust me. I know what it's like to like put yourself out there time and time again and have someone fall short every time because they're just not mentally or emotionally where you are. Like I've been through that quite a few times. Um, and it sucks and it sticks with you and it scars you in a lot of ways. And I knew that that was what I was doing to him, but I was like, bro, you're 28. Like I'm 22. Cut me some slack. Like you've lived a lot more life than I've lived comparatively. And you've had more relationships than I've had and you've had more experiences than I've had. And if I met, I'm 26 now. So if I met a 28 or 29 year old guy now, I'm sure we'd be a great match. And I'm, and that's probably what I will be looking for in the future as an older guy who actually like knows who he is and knows what he wants. Um, But at the time, I think like, I was pretty mature for my age, but I wasn't ready for him. He was husband material. I think. And I was not looking for a husband. I was looking for like a good time. And I don't know if that makes me sound horrible, but when you're 22 and just graduated and want to move to a different country, like, of course, you're not looking for a husband unless you want to get that green card, honey. Anyway, so whatever, long story short, we dated for a few months and we had lots of fun for the most part and we really bonded and I did come to fall for him. And I think I was a little bit too far in the like, I don't really like him that much, but he's so good to me. He's so sweet and he's so, and he would never hurt me. Like, uh, those are literally the kind of things I was, I was like justifying why I was with him, even though I didn't really want to be. And I knew it wasn't right. And I wanted to like meet other people and, but you know what the fucked up thing is? Cause like, I'm, I have, I'm totally taking responsibility for this too. I'm not saying he like, he like love bomb me into a relationship I don't really think that that's what that was um like I was consensual but I I also think I was young and naive and and very homesick and very lonely which has like a big a big factor in like just taking what you can get in terms of like love and affection and company and I know that sounds evil but like unless you've lived somewhere by yourself alone and you're like desperately homesick, like you'll understand what I'm saying, where someone wants to see you and hang out with you, it's really hard to cut that off. Because it's like, well, who else am I going to spend my nights with? Who else am I going to text if something goes wrong? Like who else is gonna, you know, like you have friends and stuff, but they're not, it's not the same. So anyway, um, so we ended up breaking up I broke up with him in December before I went home for Christmas. I was so miserable in Belfast. I was having panic attacks every single day. I could not stop crying. It was one of the worst mental health periods of my life, for sure. I was working at a job I hated. Um, 
the guy that I thought was going to be there was not there, Richard. And I was extremely depressed about that. I was in a relationship where I felt like a horrible person every single day. And the weather was crap. Like I moved to Ireland in the fall, which is notoriously like really rainy and dark and dreary in the UK or in Ireland. So I was not um, in the best state of mind. And so I wanted to move home. And I was like, this was a mistake. I should not have moved here. And so I would call my my mom booked me a flight. My mom and dad, they were like really concerned about my mental health. So they booked me a flight home for Christmas. And they're like, stay for like four weeks, like have a nice long rest and then reevaluate. We can cancel. Well, actually I had to move back anyway to like get my crap. But my mom actually flew back with me um, at the end of January. And then I kind of started fresh and I like gave it a good go. And then I ended up staying until Christmas of the next year. So I ended up staying for like a year and a half total. Um, and then I moved back to the, to England and anyway, that's a story for a different day, but I literally sat this man down, this grown man, and I was extremely honest. And I said, I just don't see why, like this working for us right now. I am so mentally unwell. You can see it. I can see it. I'm probably going to end up moving home to Canada soon within the next few months. Cause I don't like it here. I'm not happy. And I'm not over my ex and I want to be so bad. I desperately want to be over my ex because my ex sucks and you don't, but you can't just turn off a butt, like a button or a switch and make everything change. Like these things take time. And so I was very honest with him and he was crying and I was crying and it was awful. And he just was like, you've broken my heart. Like, I can't believe this. And, and he left and it was extremely upsetting. (laughs) I really didn't want to hurt him. And I hated myself for it, but I knew it was the right thing to do at the time. So we broke up and then I go back to Canada and the entire time I'm in Canada, typical Sarah, I'm like, Peter, this Peter, that Peter, this Peter, that I was like, what did I do? I had such a good thing. Like, what did I do? And then I was like, definitely romanticizing it from afar. And I was filling in my friends and family about him and just like painting him out in this perfect light, I think. And then people were like, well, why'd you guys break up? He sounds great. And then I was getting confused. So when I moved back, I ended up meeting him for coffee, which like, this is so toxic. Like, I'm not gonna lie. Like, this was just me being selfish. And everybody has selfish moments in relationships, especially when you're still growing and learning and you're immature. Um, but I I was like, let's grab a coffee and catch up and like, see where we're both at. Um which he was really just trying to heal and I just was not letting him go because it was like I wanted to have my cake and eat it too a little bit I think so he met me for coffee and he came in with like a chip on his shoulder right off the bat and I was like oh boy and he just did not smile once like did not even look at me like he had a hard time even looking at me and I'm just sitting there like my Christmas was great I missed you um I hope you're doing well like I love that sweater la 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 like not saying anything at all with any substance that he would actually want to like I think he was meeting with me hoping that I would like ask for him back and I definitely did not do that I was very much like just testing the waters to see how he was and 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 so he was not happy so he ended up leaving and so I moved on and I dated another guy for a while for oh he was so beautiful hi Rory hi Hi, you're listening. He was literally a 10 out of 10, like the most gorgeous man I've ever dated. Did we connect on any other level? No, not really. Not spiritually, not intellectually, not in any way. But that boy, like I would say hotter than Henry Cavill. And that's saying something. He was, he was something special. All right. I'll tell you. He looked a little bit like that guy from, he has a really long name. I can't remember it right now, but he's like off the politician he played River, I think, in The Politician. And then he was in that movie, The Girl from Riverdale, like when she's pregnant. And then there's like two different scenarios of what could have happened. Do you guys remember that movie? It like came out. It was actually really good. And he was in that. He was like one of the main characters. His name's like David, I think. But anyway, he looked a little bit like him, but hotter. And so we had our fun for like five weeks or six weeks. And he was like perfect rebound. Um, but that didn't work out because he was moving to London. So I was like, bye. Uh, um... And then I was kind of sad and lonely again. (laughs) I'm so toxic. No, I'm just a human. And humans crave 
comfort and love and consist like it's normal everybody's done this shit before it's just like sounds bad when I'm relaying it with like a camera I don't know it sounds like I'm evil anyway so I uh texted Peter back at some point oh it was St. Patrick's Day and I contemplated it forever should I text him should I not I don't want to hurt him so being a selfish idiot I was like oh let me try to get Peter back and I genuinely did like I pursued that boy hard for like two or three months like went to his shows because oh this is very important I can't believe I hadn't said this he was a musician I cannot believe I haven't said this he was a musician he had a band um and they played all over Belfast and all over Northern Ireland and that was like his full-time job like he would play two or three gigs a night like a few nights a week and that was how he made his income and he was yeah, it was really cool. I saw so many of his shows. Like, I'd always bring my friends to see his shows. And um, so, yeah, I was, like, kind of proud of myself because I was, like, if you could go back. Sorry. I was, like, if you could go back and tell little 15-year-old Sarah, who was obsessed with Ireland, that she dated when she's older, she's going to date an uh, a cute Irish musician that looks like Niall Horan. I would have been like, me? What? (laughs) He actually serenaded me a few times. Uh, Actually, maybe just once. I think I'm blowing it out of proportion. But he did serenade me in a bar, I remember very vividly, when he was performing live. And there was a whole bunch of people there. And I was actually hanging out because I went to the show by myself because I was being a supportive girlfriend. And, uh, but I was bored. (laughs) No, that sounds bad. No, I wasn't bored. I was alone, though. So, of course, you want to, like, it's like an hour show. Like, you, I don't want to just sit there and stare at him. So I sat down with this, like, bachelorette party, and they were, we were just talking and laughing and having fun. And then they're like, oh, this musician's, like, really cute or whatever. And I'm like, thanks. That's, like, my boyfriend. And then they were like, what? Oh, my God, you're so lucky. And then he was like, this one goes out to Sarah my girl or something like that and then he sang brown eyed girl by van morrison to the entire bar and all these girls were looking at me and they were like ah you're so lucky oh my god and i was like me like i was living my teenage fantasy it was so cute and van morrison's from northern ireland if you didn't know so it was like this like full circle moment and um i have very pleasant memories like things obviously did not work out with this with this poor guy But little moments like that, I will definitely remember when I'm like 95 and telling my grandkids about this. So yeah, I definitely fell in love with him and I definitely did start to see his, his promise and his potential, but I think too much damage had been done. Like he was very hurt and I didn't give him enough time to like recover and I definitely didn't probably give myself enough time to recover and to like actually grow. So I was kind of like pressuring him a little bit to like take me back because I hate I hate being in limbo like if there's one thing about me like I do like spontaneity and unpredictability but I don't like not knowing what will happen and like potentially getting hurt or getting lost or getting screwed over like I hate that feeling and I get very anxious and like fight for control And so he was just, like, not sure if he wanted to actually give me, like, he was, like, hanging out with me and stuff, but it was always with a wall up. And he, like, refused to introduce me to his friends and family again and, like, bring me back into that world. And he was just, like, still punishing me a bit. Like, he'd still make these comments about how much I hurt him and stuff. And I was just, like, ready to move on at that point. I was like, look, bro, I was having a mental health crisis. I thought I was moving back to Canada. Like, it's not like I cheated on you. It's not like I betrayed you in any way like I was very honest with you the entire time I'm sorry if that honesty sucked because it's not like a lot of what I was saying was pleasant to hear I get that like but at the end of the day at least I was being honest and I wasn't playing fast and loose with your feelings and your emotions I mean I think anyway so I was kind of pressuring him like forgive me or don't but I'm only here for like two years max and I want to move on with my life like if you don't want to be with me that's fine But you can't just string me along for months and months and months and then decide you don't want to be with me to like, I think he wanted to hurt me, which I get like that's human nature like someone hurts you you want to hurt them like I do get that. But like also, I don't know, I also am just such a 
impulsive, fast moving person. Like I'm just like, just be with me or don't like, how do you live in this in between? It's just too hard. So I sent him this big text, which is like mistake number one, basically telling him he needed to like figure his shit out and decide if he wanted to be with me or not, because this in between thing was like toxic for both of us. And I felt like he wasn't being very fair to me. Like he was still punishing me for something that happened months ago. And it was like, I don't know. I don't remember what I sent, but I know he found it extremely hurtful and offensive. I don't think that was what my intention was, but like, who knows? I was young. Like, I don't even remember what I said, but it was definitely something that pissed him off because he didn't talk to me for like two weeks, like literally ghosted me. I was like, oh, (laughs) and then I'd like try to reach out and nothing. And I like try to reach out and nothing. And I'm like, are you alive? These men and they're ghosting. They need so much time to process. It's actually insane. Like, boys, go to therapy, all of you. Like, it should not take weeks and weeks and weeks to process your emotions. Like, it's okay to take a bit of time, but, like, you don't need to go someone for weeks to process your emotions. Like, just, like, a day or two, I get it. But, like, anyway, that's a different story. We all need to go to therapy. I need to go, I need to keep doing therapy, too. I get it. But I was like, oh, he's, he's died. (laughs) Okay. And then he showed up at my door one day and knocked on the door and like, I opened the door. I'm like, hi. And he threw a bag at me and like stormed off, like threw a bag at me. And I was like, whoa, come back. And he was like, no, we're done. And I'm like, what? (laughs) I'm like so naive just in my own little Sarah world. In my head, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, which is maybe just shows like me being toxic, but I literally was like, but I just wanted you to love me. Story of my life. Like me being such a succubus on these men because they give me nothing and then I latch on more and then they give me nothing and then I latch on more. And then I like completely do something impulsive and make a fool of myself and they get scared. And then I'm like, but I just wanted you to love me. But that's literally what it is, guys. Like, and uh, I feel like I didn't really do anything that wrong in the first place. I really tried to give him a fair shot, but I also was trying to honor my emotions and my experience. And um, I mean, I definitely made some mistakes and I would do things differently if I could go back. But I felt like he his reaction was a little a little intense. And then I was like, come back. <laughs> Get back here. Because like I I don't let things go easily. <laughs> Uh, clearly. And so he came back in. I was like, get inside the house. Get inside the house right now. Sit down. You're going to talk to me like a man. You're going to talk to me adult to adult. You're not going to sulk, run off and sulk off after throwing a fucking bag. So in this bag, I think it was like some belongings. I know it was definitely a book I loaned him, which I'm glad I got it back. It's like one of my favorite books. And I think there was a few other things. I can't remember like a t-shirt, like, or maybe it was just the book. I can't remember. But it was like, he came to return something that belonged to me and then he was going to literally leave and give me no explanation but I forced him to sit down and then what ensued was five hours this was on like a Sunday or something my roommate wasn't home like five hours of a horrible breakup like the most intense awful breakup like him ripping apart my character me literally on the floor cowering bawling screaming, shaking, like, I can't do this without you. I can't do because I was already like, so overwhelmed 22 living in a new country by myself, like trying to make friends, trying to figure things out trying to pay rent. And I he was like one of my safe places. And I just like couldn't handle the thought of losing he was my best friend. Like, he was he was like my per- my go to person. And I became very reliant on him and very attached to him. And like, in that moment, I was thinking, I guess, quite selfishly, but I was like, I can't live here without you. Like, what am I going to do? Which is so funny because honestly, I feel like after that moment, after him and I broke up, my life got extremely better. Like, I got a job I loved at Titanic. I started making so many more friends. I started going out more. I started traveling a bit more. Like, he was actually kind of holding me back in a lot of ways. And I I don't mean that in a mean way. I just don't think we were like, I don't think we were very healthy for each other at that time in life and but at that moment oh my god I just couldn't I just went on like 
fight or flight mode. Like I literally thought the world was crumbling around me. I was like, you cannot do this to me. Like I can't live here. I need to go home. I need my mom. I need my dad. I'm like getting emotional talking about it. But I was like, I can't. Because when I broke up with, when Richard broke up with me, year, I guess this would have been like a year or two before, I was also in Belfast by myself without my family. And then I moved to Spain for a few months and was trying to process like the worst heartbreak of my life without my family. And like, this seems to be a recurring <laughs> issue for me because, you know, that's what happens when you live away from home. And I just remember just wanting my mom and wanting my dad and just being so upset. And I was also in the process of moving to a different apartment across town but he just didn't want to hear it. And he was so angry at me. And he was like, you know, that message you sent me was the most selfish thing I've ever read. Like, you are actually the worst person, essentially. Like, like you, if you really loved me, you would have given me as much time as I need. You wouldn't pressure me. You wouldn't be impatient with me. You would sit back as long as it takes and let me process. Which honestly, kind of fair point. Because if he was really the man, like, if he was really the man that I saw myself with forever, if he was really the love of my life, I probably would have sat back for days, months, years and let him and like prove to him that I was worthy of forgiveness. But because I don't know, I was just like, I'm here, but I, there's no guarantee I'll be here forever. So like, t like, let's do this or let's not do this. And I also stand by that. I don't think either of us were like completely right or completely wrong. I think there was a lot of unacknowledged pain on his end that I didn't fully apologize for and I didn't fully like give him time to heal like I, I don't think I realized how much I hurt him the first time we broke up so then for me to come in a few months later and be like get over it and pick me I think he took that as a massive offense um an attack and like I see it now in retrospect a little bit. I see his perspective, but I don't, I still don't think he handled it that well, really, like to ghost me for weeks and leave me sweating and then to show up and just like throw a book at me and storm off. Like, I was like, bro, you're like 29. I think he was 29 by this point. I'm like, come on, <laughs> like, let's be adults. Um, and, but he's a Libra, very emotional, very, very, <laughs> uh, I won't say anymore. I, I tend to go for Libras, uh, and they tend to, anyway, um, moving <laughs> so yeah, and then I guess that's the end of the story, guys, like, we, actually, I will say, he did hold me, <laughs> he held me while I cried, he did, I was hysterical, bawling, shaking, could not breathe, he was, like, rubbing my back, holding me like a newborn baby, and he's, he's like, Sarah, I have to go, I'm like, no, he's like, Sarah, I have to go, like, I can't, I can't do this. Like, I can't be with you. And I'm like, please just stay for one more night. Like, please, I don't want to be alone. I don't want to be alone. And he left, like, eventually he left and he was like, I'm sorry, like, have a good life. And we never spoke ever again. And that would have been April, March or April of 2019. So yeah, it's been a long ass time. I hope he's well. We don't have each other on anything. We don't talk. And I knew that was for the best. Like, I considered a few times reaching out to him just to, like, check in. And, like, I'm sure if I saw him now, it's been, like, four years, I would hope we could, like, give each other a hug and, like, be civil. Um, but I don't know if that's what he would want. Like, I'm sure he's moved on and has, like, a girlfriend or a wife, probably. He's in his 30s now or potentially even a child. And that is what I want for Peter because Peter is a good person and has a big, big heart. And really was there for me in a lot of dark times where I needed somebody to to be there and to take care of me and to just be like a guiding light. And he was that for me. And I'm eternally grateful to him, even though he did. The whole ending was very traumatic in a lot of ways. And and there's certain things about his behavior that I didn't love. And I'm sure he feels the same way about me. I think as you heal and as you move on, you're, you're able to look back at people and see things with just a little bit more of an objective, um, compassionate lens and be like, everything just feels so personal. And a lot of the times with breakups, even though it is personal, it's not, which is so crazy because it's, it's so, it's such a mind fuck that you're like so out of control of relationships sometimes. Like you could do every single thing right, say all the right things, follow all the right timelines. And if that, sorry, I'm like so burpy. This is what happens when I drink my sparkling water or when I podcast. 
that's the end of the story. <laughs> How sad. It started so fun. Like, ooh, he serenaded me. Like, we went out dancing. And now it's like, womp womp. But so, yeah, let me know um, if you guys like these stories. I have a few more. I don't have, like, a ton but there's definitely one more I could tell about Richard if you'd like to hear it. That one's the craziest of them all. I'm not even exaggerating. Um, and yeah, I could tell you about some of my best dates, worst dates. I know this isn't particularly about life in your 20s. It's more about me. My dad kind of like doesn't like when I do these episodes that he's like, they're just like a personal journal. It's just you talking about yourself. I'm like, okay, but people like the tea. And also... I'm sure if you're listening to this, there was some part of this story that you could relate to on some level or something you could have learned from my mistakes or whatever. And that's still an important part of a podcast is to like connect with your audience in that way through your own personality and your own experiences, I think. And, and if it made you, if you've gone through something like this and it made you feel less alone or less crazy, then like, that's what I'm here to do. Cause we're all crazy. Just some of us are a lot less subtle about it like me anyway so yeah I guess I'll wrap it up there thank you so much for listening if you enjoyed this podcast and please follow leave a rating and review you can follow me on instagram all the links are in the description uh below thank you I love you I appreciate you um I hope you have a really good week and I'll be back next week with another episode bye